heard about this thing in Wyoming, Josh Allen. So two years ago, I trained Sam Darnold and Josh Allen and Kyle Allen. That was my draft class. All right, now you had Josh Allen going number one in your mock draft. Josh Allen, he probably has the biggest upside. Now he is a, he's a modern day cowboy. Josh Allen can do magical things. So we know you and Josh came into the NFL the same year. How did this friendship begin? Started draft training together and then we both went our separate ways and we just kept coming back to California off seasons, hanging out and now we're here. Uh, time out. <laughs> 48 hours in Buffalo. I would have loved yeah, to add say. on a couple more days, but appreciate you coming on. This is happening right after cut day. So I think it's only right that we at least acknowledge it. Cut day's tough around the league. I know it's not tough for you, Josh, but it is tough to see some of your guys go. But um, weird day around the league. We all have our own cut stories, but um, just feel for those guys today all around the league. Sad day in sports. One of, the, one of the saddest days in sports. I mean, talk about it. There's thousands of guys that no longer are on a team and don't really know what next direction. Some guys are going to comp- contemplate retirement. Some guys are going to contemplate whether they want to keep playing, XFL, somewhere else. Like it, it, it's such a sad day. Um, you know, because you, you spend so so much time with some of these guys. And, you know, if you don't get there to the uh, locker room early enough to, to say goodbye, you may never see some of these guys again. And it's just kind of sad. Yeah, it was me this morning. I showed up at where well, our team meetings at 10 today. I showed up at like 920 and it was a ghost town. And I didn't realize how we do it here. So I didn't know like cuts at 4 p.m. I didn't know like it's it's weird. But um, yeah, weird day. And I was talking to someone else about it today. I don't know if it's like this in any other sport. Like in NBA, mm-hmm. do you have 18 guys on the roster for however long in training camp? And then when it comes to day one of the season, you cut. I don't think that's how it is around any other sport. I don't think there's a cut day at all for basketball. But yeah, like I never thought it was. Roster or not, you might have a, a two way contract, right? Where yeah. G League and that, but like those are kind of far and few in between, I think. There was times when it was really cool, you know, and like, hey, I, I get it. You know what I mean? The coach is like, dude, here's the situation. You know what I mean? Like I got cut in Chicago. I tore my peck in OTAs. And the reason was like, look, we got to go with Jimmy Clausen. I can't wonder if my backup quarterback's going to get hurt throwing in practice. Like I, I can't yeah. and I get it. I'm like, dude, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. And then I've had uh, the car service outside. We leave your playbook right here. We really appreciate everything on the way out. Yeah. Like, I've had that too. And it's like, What? And you kind of get embedded, right? I mean, like these, a lot of these guys got cut, been having dinner like twice a week, become, going over to Josh's house. Hey, like you really actually feel a part of it in the off season. And I'd argue you spend more time away from the facility in the off season than you do during the season with your yeah. teammates. Cause you're actually golfing. You're actually hanging out. You're actually going to kids' birthdays or whatever. So I think it's, it's way harder than getting cut in the middle of the season when there's a million things going on. Um, and then also you could be moving to Detroit in 45 minutes um yeah. and so just the many directions it could go yeah um but uh yeah tough day and and one uh that i hope both you guys never experience well let's get into it all right so let's talk about the important things in life mm. aka golf the number mm-hmm. one important thing you probably had one of the most insane golf off seasons and you'll probably top it next year, but this one was pretty insane. Can you name every golf course that you played this off season or just, you can go top, top to bottom, top to bottom name best first. You can start with Craig Byrne if you think it's the best. Um, we'll start with the two that I belong to Craig Byrne and El Miguel in Orange County. Um, Cypress, mm. Augusta national mm. twice, mm. right? Twice. Te- I mean, yeah, twice, technically three times, but who's counting? <laughs> so three. You played two balls one time, is that what you did? Yeah. <laughs> Mash up. I did that one twice. Mm-hmm. We played a lot of golf there. Um, Augusta Country Club. Not to be confused with Augusta National. Two different ones. Yeah. Um, El Dorado. I played in the Pebble Beach deal, so did Pebble. I played Pebble with Kyle uh, the day before. Uh, did... Uh, Monterey Peninsula, mm. Ocean Court, Spyglass, um, Edgewood, Tahoe. Mm. The great. We played Pelican. We played Monarch. 
did you end up, I know we were talking about it. Did you end up playing McKenna on Maui? I did play McKenna Maui. I played yeah, McKenna. Uh, Kapalua. Oh, um, let's see. This was better than I thought, and I thought it was going to be good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're forgetting one. The third time you come on the show, we'll oh, just start with, oh, where, where oh, haven't you played yet? Uh, <laughs> restart. The ones I belong to. Craig, Brent, Illegal. Oak Hill. Yeah, you're a Oak member Hill. at Oak Hill. You yeah. missed it. I forgot. Well, talk about that. Well, let's talk about you. You want to play the top 100 courses, right? How do you, how do you think you're going to go about that? Yeah, the top top 100 in the world, obviously going off of Golf Digest, top 100. Um, it's going to take a long time. Like it's going to take, it's going to be multiple years, maybe a 10 to 15 year conquest, depending on how aggressive I do want to get. It's, it's something right now. You have to plan it out accordingly. Like if you go to Australia, like you got to figure out a way on the four or five there. And there's, I think there's two in New Zealand. There might be three in New Zealand. So like within that trip alone, you can knock off, eight of them. You can go to, to kind of the Hamptons area and knock off three or four of them in certain trips. Um, you just kind of have to be strategic about it. And I want to start traveling more. I want to start playing some of these golf courses. And obviously it's easier said than done. Most high end golf courses, you need to, to at least play with a member, um, which is the hard part. There's a lot in the United States that we can knock off. There's a lot on the East Coast. I've played most of them. I think I've got 10 to maybe 11 already plugged off. Um, so we got we to gotta keep going. How long do you think before uh, Buffalo National gets in the top 100? Ooh. Um, I don't know. Our, our uh, superintendent, Keith Mitchell, has got to be – he's got to be on top of this game. we got to be make... slacking. I, I've heard bits and pieces. Can you can you give me the the flyover view layout of what Buffalo, Na Buffalo National is? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty exclusive club here in Buffalo. Mm. Um, it's pretty tight. Join, you gotta bring a, a bottle of whiskey. Um, okay. Nice bottle. Like we're gonna vet the bottle. We're gonna make sure it's not a counterfeit bottle as well. This is not a maker's mark situation, then. <laughs> no. 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 That just gotta be you down on the list. Heavy. I am bourbon. I'm not a Scotch guy. You know. Yeah. Down the road, but not, you know, my palate's still pretty young on, on the whiskey trail. So keep it to. Uh, Keep it to bourbon. Maybe an Irish whiskey. I'm fine with that. Um, yeah. Phil Shakur got me a Japanese whiskey one time. It wasn't bad. It was okay. mm, yeah. Japanese whiskey is nice. On top of that, you'll be given, obviously, hat, shirt, some branded equipment that we're still working on the logo for. Mm. Um, and then, to you know, uh, within this Buffalo National, you hit, you hit a hole in one. If you call the right flag, we're going to dedicate some of these rocks around the pond to that individual. So you make a home one to the, the flag you call, you get to pick your rock and we're going to get that uh, engraved and it's going to say, mm. I, I'm the only one that's got a rock so far, the Josh Allen rock. You know, can I, so, can I, um, is that, is that the term you rocked? Yeah. Yeah. Like Kyle, you never believe it. I just rocked on six. That's the mm, term. No, it's just, you hit a just oh, one. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like, like that. That's forcing it. That's forcing it. I kind of like it. Can I have, I have a rock suggestion up. for the rock situation. Yeah. I think that, you get to pick your rock and then you get your face sculpted Mount Rushmore style into the rock. <laughs> that just depends on how often these are going to go in. What you got three holes. This is your house. How many tea boxes? I got three tea boxes. I got one, one green, three tea boxes, one green, three tea boxes. What are the Epic. distances? One, uh, 85. It depends on what flag you go to. 85 is kind of like the low end on the first tea box, but 130, on the mid, about 155 from the back. The, you didn't throw a tee box like 260 out just because? No, you didn't get enough land. Not yeah. enough land. Let's see if you land it on the green and stop it. We'll put like a little, little tee box for you so you can hold the green, Jordan. We'll put one like 20, 20 yards away on the right side of the pond so you don't have to hit over any water. Perfect. That's, that's the rule, too. You, you get three shots. If you hit three yeah. in the water, you're in the water. And you're not no, you, you I would assume... Like, you gotta land one on the this is like a unique club too, where like, because I've never heard of this before, but I assume this would be the case where you're actually only allowed to play one specific type of golf ball at Buffalo National. Like, if somebody rolls up with a Pro V1 no. on, and they and they rock, Encore Vero what I did. ones only. Um, what about Vero X twos? These are maybe the XPs if you want. Let's let's keep those in the bag. Vero X ones. 
<laughs> Maybe an elixir, depend on how well you can you can strike. What about it a top? Spin. What if I pull up in a top flight? Is a top flight allowed? A friction. The only other golf ball I would allow would probably be the Kirkman's. Yep. Thank you for mm. saying that. Speaking of whiskey, um, you are a whiskey drinker as of now. And the other day, I saw you probably about as hungover as I've ever seen a human being. I don't know what you're about. It, it was fine. It was an off day. It's no, no big deal. Um, you were walking around with a Pedialyte and a personal bottle of oxygen, which is an insane move. I got an IV after Raby's birthday last weekend, but I have not heard of, of personal oxygen bottle. Um, that and the Pedialyte, that'll get you, that'll turn your day around real quick. And I did. It did. You turned it around. I was impressed with the turnaround. But what really was coming of that is the night before, you were playing pickleball against um, Matt Barkley's wife and lost twice after saying that you are. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So that was Josh Allen. He just turned his camera off. Yeah. And he's back. My camera is the one that's supposed to go off. And he's back. Let's next question. I ref I, I'm going to walk off set if we keep talking about this. Okay. Anyways, we won't we won't confirm or deny if you lost or won. But what was said is that you are the best athlete on the planet. Do you believe that's that? that's end quote? End quote. Like, no, just beginning. End quote. Nothing else. I'm the best athlete on the planet. Period. End quote. Yeah. So make sure I got it right. Okay. I I think. My skill set allows me to traverse over multiple sports. And I I'm, I think hand-eye coordination, I think size, speed, athleticism, all that stuff aside, like I feel like I could I could have played baseball in college. I feel like I could have played basketball in college. I swam growing up. Like I just did so many things as a kid. Low key, think, phenomenal swimmer. I can attest to phenomenal. that. Phenomenal. Yeah. Not in the ocean because you're too scared of sharks. But yeah, swimming. What else? And uh, baseball, I believe. I've watched the softball stuff on IG. Basketball, you don't have a great game, but I think if Bas you poured yourself into it, like if I would have, if I done basketball, I've been like a three and D guy. Like I'm, I'm okay with that. I would not a flasher. I'm not going to be above the rim all the time. I can dunk, but nothing crazy. But I can shoot. I can shoot. I can shoot a little bit, you know. And I think that again, my size, my body type, hand-eye coordination. The only sport that I don't think I would excel in, I think, because I didn't start young enough, didn't really start at all, was hockey. I think that's a different sport. I think to that's be able nice. to skate and move the way that they do, and that's tough. But, again, golf. I love golf. I wish I would have started as a kid. Um, let's see. Tennis, you got to start pretty young as a tennis player, but I feel like I, I could hold my own against regular people, not racket sports. It's fine. It's um, sports. Racket sports, like that, that, that takes some nuance. Well, the other thing. But so soccer, I can, go, I can go out there run around. I, I don't know if I'd be great at it, but put me as, you know. You honestly don't sound very someone. confident right I'll now. I'll defend the shit out of it. You don't sound very confident. I'll defend the shit out of it. I don't care. Put me in the back. Probably could have played multiple positions too, right? What other position do you think, had you just focused on that, would you be a bill as? Center. <laughs> Tight end. Tight end, D end, or obvious. Anything else you think you could have played? Maybe, maybe Mike linebacker. Yeah, you could have rushed the shit out of a passer for sure. It's nice to kind of hit somebody else so they get hit. You know? Yeah, I think about that. Like, if you could, like, what would be the funnest thing to be unbelievably dominant at if you couldn't pick quarterback? It's like wideouts up there for me, but pass, pass, pass rusher, oh, pass like, rusher. If there's a thing, I feel like I, if I could choose one thing, I'm the best in the world at. I'm taking like. Probably like heavyweight UFC. Yeah. It, you like the baddest ass on the planet. Like nobody would want to touch, like fight with you, touch with you, come close to you. Like I think that'd be that'd be pretty cool to be known as like the top heavyweight in the world. I'll throw UFC in there too. I'll, I'll knock you out, Jordan. No, I'm saying it's something that like had you just all <laughs> had that been all you've been doing. I I saw a video of these kids play, are doing UFC, like actual like. Don't know if I agree with just, it, but mm, they're doing it now. The, it's cool that they're well, like, Jordan's kids do it. They do jujitsu. Not a lot of context. It's the incidental head bumps, but no, oh, yeah. Right. Our, my, our first and second grade little jujitsu class is packed on Mondays and Wednesdays. At, shout out West Coast Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, Ford's getting good too. He's slamming kids. I'll do. I'll 
put Ford in the ring with me. I dare you. <laughs> See you in February. <laughs> put him in the ring with me. I dare you. I'll snap his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, speaking of being hungover as well, um, what happens when you're hungover is you throw up a lot of times and you pull trig, which I think you did the other day, but you also pull trig before or every game. It's a known thing. Um, but I experienced it for the first time in the first preseason game. You weren't even playing in the first preseason game. You looked over at me. You were like, you want me to You want me to throw up for you? <laughs> like, you want me to get you in the zone? I'll throw up before the game. And it was kind of a weak throw up the first time. But the second preseason game, we were team prayer in the shower. We were getting ready for team prayer. And there's a trash can right by the team prayer. And you were just yakking. And it was, I think you said you had like a spicy chicken sandwich night before too. That's, that's um, tough one. Yeah. We, we played, the second game was a night game. If oh, we're yeah, playing a one game, I, I don't ever eat like before because I know I'm going to throw up. Yeah. It's like I would throw up stomach vial, whatever. I ate an extra hot chicken sandwich before the second game and just, mm. it was, it was bad. It was really bad. Um, Day of Nashville hot chicken liquid sandwich. Liquid hot crazy. magma. That's yeah. a crazy <laughs> move. <laughs> It burned more on the way up than it did on the way down, I'll tell you that. What do you think about throwing up before the game, like, gets you ready? Because I didn't really understand it, and then I saw you do it, and I'm like, I kind of get it. Yeah. I've never never witnessed – I've never seen anybody do it every time. I mean, I've seen people throw up four games. I've never seen it be, like, a thing. Like, I spat my cleats, I throw up, you know. It's not, like, an anxiety thing. Like, it's not Mm – I'm not nervous – I honestly think, like, I, I was sick one time, um, Detroit Lions preseason, my second year, and I, I was actually sick. And before that, in my football career, after warm-ups, I would start, like, dry heaving. I would throw the ball, my thumb would get stuck. Like, my body was just, like, trying to tell me something. I threw up that game, didn't have any of that. I was like, hold up, I might be on to something. So when I, when I throw up, and I now, like, my, it's like a, a response my body does – and it like gets me out of any of that. I don't drive during the game. I don't like feel like I'm cramping. Um, part of it's like primal. Like I, I think like going back to just primal, like a hungry warrior fights harder, right? Like yeah, that's that's how I think of it. So like that's just kind of why I think I do it. I don't know. It's just kind of this weird thing that I've adopted, and it's I think it's helped my my career out quite a bit. So you've officially become famous this year. Um, I don't know if you noticed that or not. How does it feel to actually be famous now? What does that mean? Well, you're you're on TMZ all the time. You're like on TMZ and in like real fame, not not like Instagram or ESPN, but like real fame. Yeah, there's like that guy knows Jordan Palmer. Did you ever think about like parlaying that into like a feet only fans? No, there's like Josh. Like, how's Jordan doing? How did his feet look? Can you give us some of Jordan's feet? I was like, dude, I can't help you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Jordan's feet are crusty. crusty. Uh, but for real, on that subject, like, I know how much you hate it. I know how weird it is for you. Is it an interesting transition after, like, being the man in football and, you know, you get a lot of attention as it is, and then now it's kind of just a, a different area of attention? It's weird. Yeah, it's it's definitely something that I don't think I'll ever get used to. Um mm-hmm. And like it comes with the territory, and like I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm, I'm at ease with it, I guess you could say. Um, but even I know this is like the whole commercial stuff too. Like it's always weird to sit down and see you on TV. And it's just it's a lot. What I, I don't think people understand is like people assume that you spent so much time filming these commercials. Oh, you took like, it takes two or three hours to film those on an off day. Like it's yeah. it. it it did, it does not matter. Doesn't do anything. Um, doesn't take. Doesn't distract you. Doesn't take focus away. It's like, all right, I got to go here for four hours and film this and knock it out, and then I'm done. You know. So, but it was weird. I, there was, I was watching Sammy D spin the rock the other night. Saw him throw a, a sick mm-hmm. ass down to um, Willie Sneed in the back of the end zone, and like that next two or three, it was. Mad. It was uh, Verizon, and I think yeah. it was Paramount Plus or something else. And I was like, I like turned the back to back. I don't want to freaking watch myself on TV. It's so weird. You're this year's Whopper commercial. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Explain that? <laughs> Literally. Whopper, 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 whopper. whopper. <laughs> remember that commercial? <laughs> no, but it I was can the like, worst. hear my son singing oh, that. Yeah. Oh. It's really bad, but I think when we were watching the Bengals game last year and DeMar got hurt, it was so sad. And I think you and me were on the phone, Jordan, and then I think they panned to the Whopper commercial right after. It was horrible. They're good. It's you're getting you're commercial. getting way better. The commercials are – I mean, it's easy when you're shaving and smiling, but, like, I'm starting to see some of your personality come out in these, which is good because, like you said, it's two or three hours, and it's not like you studied to prepare for it for the three days leading up to it. You kind of show up. What do we got? Cool. What am I wearing? Awesome. Here we go. Got it. Next. And then – then you just are at their discrepancy just for that just them to see how they piece it all together. Starting to see some more personalities. We're starting to see some more Josh in it. I, I would like one day, like if if a company wanted to green like me and just have me as the creative oh, director. Yeah. That would be pretty fun. Speaking of <laughs> self promotion, acting, all that stuff, big topic, the court, uh, show quarterback. Um passed on it, is that right? I mean I I'm sure they asked. Um yeah. I pass on I pass on it this year. Um, not saying that I won't ever do it. I thought it was well done. Um, Did you see it? I saw parts of it. I didn't watch the entire thing. Because I, I think it was like a handful of shoot dates. And I think the irony of like whether it's you and I, you know, I, I think I know who's on it, but everyone's saying that, that they're not on it and then they're going to you know, do it later and, and show who's on it and all that stuff. But the irony of – you being asked to be on it, and not just you, other people too, being asked to be on it and passing on a leading role in a guaranteed success show versus what actors go through where they audition. And so like yeah. the irony of that, of this world you're living in now, where it's like, you know, people go for a role, they get it, they don't get it. And then here's this one where they're asking and it's just, there is no audition. There is no, um, and I just think it's funny how like those, those worlds collide. Um, what 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 intrigues you about doing it? Like if you ever did it, because I, I know there's the creative control and all that stuff is different than Hard Knocks. I was on Hard Knocks. It's like, shoot, you, you just wait and see it live, what they end up putting out there. And that's why a lot of people don't want to be on Hard Knocks. Um, quarterback's different. What intrigues you about it? Well, I think the the whole just it being documented, especially if you can go out there and win a Super Bowl and yeah. have the – because, again, you look at like – Michael Jordan's Last Dance documentary, right? Like that was so sick that they had behind the scenes footage of what he was like day in and day out, practice, you know, golf, baseball, and then him being a killer on the court. I think that aspect would, I would really like about it. Um, and again, it comes with some cons of, you know, feeling like it's a little bit invasive of, a quarterback room and, and just kind of personal life and stuff like that, which again, I, I don't want there to be, just, I just don't want there to be any, any unnecessary distractions. Um, and I'm not saying that this would or wouldn't be, I can't tell you if it would. And I talked to Pat about it. He said he, it didn't bother him. Um, but just at this point in my life right now, just trying to give everything I've got to the game of football and, and focus on that. Um, one of the things I, I, uh, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I know you pride yourself on, and I think it's something your teammates and everybody loves about you too, is just the tough guy aspect, right? Um, battle through it. Not too many things that are going to keep you off the field. So right now you got 71 consecutive starts. That is the most of any active player right now. Um, like, does that, does that mean anything to you? Is that you take pride in that at all? That like out of everybody who's playing right now, you're the, the iron man or whatever the term is for that. Yeah, I think that's – that's uh, as a quarterback, right, we talk about the best abilities, availability, and making sure that I am staying on the field and, and taking care of my body off the field. But, again, on the field, sliding and taking less hits, which I don't do a fantastic job of and something that I look forward to this year working on and being better at. Um, but I think that, again, it takes – it takes a lot of people in the training room um, – coaching staff being okay with me missing a meeting here or there to get treatment on something. And, you know, everybody in this league, whether they admit it or not, they play hurt. Like there's nobody that's ever, other than maybe week one, nobody ever is full hundred percent. There's an ankle, there's a knee, there's a finger, there's a muscle in your neck. That's just giving you fits. Like everybody's dealing with something. Um, but again, just to be consistently out there in, Again, every every rep that you get in the NFL, every game that you have, 
you can learn from and just making sure that I'm learning from my experiences and trying to utilize that to the best of my ability. You're first right now with 71. You're also currently 226 games behind Brett Favre. <laughs> Think about that. Think about how hard this has been. You know what I mean? And how many injuries you've had. You've had the shoulder. You've had the UCL. You've, I mean, whatever. But a million of them. And you're like a third of the way, whatever that math shakes out to be, like a third or fourth the way towards where freaking Brett played and he played on turf. And he played, you know, similar setting in Green Bay and Buffalo. But he also played on a lot of painkillers too. He did. All right, let's talk a little bit about social media. So I think I think a lot of people agree too. Bill's social media team's killing it, right? <laughs> Funny, yeah, weird, uh, helpful, descriptive. Uh, like they're killing it on all the things. They use you. I'm sure it's, hey, dude, we got an idea, and you say yes or you say no, I don't have time, I can't do that right now. Is that pretty much how it works? Hey, J- Josh, we got this idea. Basically, yeah. Hey, and all like what I love about our, our guys are they're open to whatever I have to say to them. Like, oh, actually, that's pretty sick. Let's do that. I'm like, okay. So it's literally like I'm walking off the practice field like, hey, we need you for 10 seconds. And they do this. We do it in one take. And they're like, all right, perfect. I'm like, okay. And then I just walk in the locker room. And then an hour later, it's posted. And everyone's laughing their asses off. And some of it's, some of it's crazy. Some of it's not so crazy. Some of it's – I think it's I think they do a really good job. And they keep up with the trends pretty well. But – um, those guys are very creative. Different. So here's my question, because they they kill it. And Kyle, I remember when you were in Carolina. I thought Carolina did a great job too. Yeah, they did um, have a really good one too. But uh, they kill it, and yet, and you're, I've said it before, you're like one of the funniest people I know. Not quarterbacks, but people I know. And same reason I think at some point you should do the do the show quarterback just because so everyone can see this. But your social is basically paid partnerships. And I know you're on social all the time, right? Scroll. I know you're scrolling. Is it like at any point, are you going to be like, all right, let's, let's just do this right and have a team and do it. I mean, even my stuff, I don't even post, right? Like has that ever crossed your mind? Is there ever a point where you're going to get there? You're going to care about like that. I mean, you're, you're engaging. It'd be one thing if you're like, I don't have Instagram. What's the Instagram. thought process on that? You like doing stuff for the bills, but not, but no interest for you. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't, anything that I can keep private into myself, I'd like to keep private into myself. And like, those are kind of obligations that you have, you know, being on the bills, like they want to promote you. And I understand that. And fans want to see that and stuff. I'll let them do all that. And I'll just kind of sit back. And I try to post a little bit on my Instagram, but I don't really do the, this is my life the last week and a half or two weeks. And I, I like, I get like some people really like that and some some people do it really well. I think Kyle does a great job of his Instagram and posting like photo dump from this last week or this last month or whatever it is. I just I have a hard time posting pictures of myself. I really do. I, I agree. Know. I agree. I just went like I went on my trip and like I feel bad. I don't I don't want to say how rad this thing is and you and we just went through where you, everywhere you play golf and all that stuff. I just think there's an opportunity for somebody to come in and make some really funny shit. Oh, one hundred percent. Taking much of your time. I would, I would out like if I committed to it, I would freaking kill it. Um, let's shift gears to football expectations. 2020, 13 and three. 2021, 11 and six. 2022, 13 and three. What's the mindset? I've been talking to Kyle a bunch this last month. You a little bit. How are we feeling? What what's what's on the table for the Bills this year? Yeah, feeling good. Um, excited about how our offense is coming together. I love the guys that Bean and and Sean have brought in. I think the locker room, we're vibing really well right now. I think we're all rooting for each other. I thought our training camp was very competitive, which I think is a sign of a really good team. There were some days where the defense kicked our ass. There were some days we kicked our defense ass. There were some days it was stalemate. Um, And again, as you get into the season now, it's like, all right, now how do we work together? How do we take all that energy and juice and competitiveness that we had against each other how do we now use it with each other and then use it on another team and um to have the leaders that we have on this team you talk about a guy like Vaughn Miller who's been to a couple Super Bowls um and he's won them and Micah Hyde and Jordan Porter on the defense guys that have been here for a long time and have played in this league for a long time at a high level me Steph Mitch um having a guy like Gabe Davis who does all the right th- like we've got the guys to go in and and be mentally composed 
and ready to go at all times. And I think now I'm like sixth year in the same system. I feel like I know the system inside and out and just being able to talk and utilize communication in terms of what I want, how I see it. Um, and today we had a really good meeting and, and just looked at like two little routes and, and guys came out of that meeting like, I never saw it from that, but now if we sat down and watched it together, it's like my whole mindset on this route has changed. So I think, again, continue to let, utilize communication and everybody working together. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and, and promise anything and, and say that we're going to be this and that. We're going to be a, a hard-nosed team, and we're going to be a tough team to beat. I really, I really believe that um, because we've got guys that want to win and guys that are willing to do whatever it takes. And um, We've got a lot of good teammates in this locker room. Yeah, I would I would agree on that. And you've been on the Bills your whole team or your whole life, but there's different teams every year, right? Like from your first year to this year, the teams are a lot different. I've been on some good teams. I've been on a you bunch mean of when bad his number teams. one receiver was Kelvin Benjamin. I was a dog. Don't hate on Kelvin Benjamin, right? Well, I've been around. Touchdown. What'd you say? Not my first touchdown. But yeah, mm. there we go. Like, let's not hate on mm. Kelvin Benjamin here. Right. But I've been around a lot of different training camps, different coaches, you know, different philosophies, this and that. The competitiveness that you said in this training camp was is nowhere near anywhere else I've ever been. Like the fight, the want, the, the competitiveness to win, to want to win the rep, to to want to win the day on offense or defense. It's unbelievable. We had so many fights during training camp, and it's not like petty fights. It's like, like, no, I'm trying to win today. And then you get back in the locker room, you're best friends. Like that culture that I've seen just from being here for the last six months is a tribute to you, but it's all tribute to the coaches and everyone who's built this. It's, it's impressive. And I'm just, I'm really interested to see how that carries out. Like you said, uh, from against each other to now, like how can we bring that together and put that out on the field? All right, let's get into some games. And this is a regular occurrence. Usually somebody's betting somebody won't do something or winner gets to, or loser has to. So uh, we're gonna play the newlywed game. You guys have been buddies. You guys met uh, during draft prep six years ago. Um, been buddies ever since, and now officially teammates. Um, you guys were posers together. I'm a real Dana Point poser now. You you're are. Because you're dog. slowly becoming a loke, bro. We're going to play a little newlywed game here. You guys are BFFs. Um, I'm going to ask you guys a couple of questions. We'll see if your answers match up without further ado. Josh, describe what you first thought of. Kyle, in one word. Three, two, one. Chill. Chill. Kyle, what do you think he was going to say? I thought you were going to say thick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I was thick then. Okay. What are you guys most likely to argue about? I'll give you a stick to think about it. I'm going to come to you first, Josh. What are you most likely to argue about? Kyle, you're going to think of your answer. Josh, three, two, one. Golf. Kyle? I was going to say golf. I was going to say golf. You were? Better. But I, well, as of right now, it's not, there's not much of an argument, but it's more, it's usually who's better at golf. And right now, it's not me. Uh, I, you said that the other day. When did that happen? I tank, I've tanked. I've, You're out I've here in July, and I don't like think you shot in the 80s this. in July. I think you were straight 70s in July, and then well, Josh is yeah. like, can't, can't beat me till hole 15, and then beats me. What happened? You collapse, or did Josh take a step in August? It's both. It's, it's like one of those things where like, you just separate in different ways. Yeah, I've, wow. I've gone down, and he's gone up. It's tough. All right, Josh, who is Kyle's best friend? It has to be human. Just count us down. Count us down, George. Yeah, it has to down. be human, Josh. Human, no, non-fiance. It doesn't have to be human. It doesn't have Three, to be human. two, one. Seekirk. Mm. Kyle? Well, my first answer was Duke, which you were going to yeah. say. Yeah, your dog. Um, yeah, it'd, it'd probably be Seekirk. Christian Kirk. That's my answer. Yep. Those are day ones. Spot on. um, also a Rumi. All right. Asking you, Josh, combined between the two of you, how many Super Bowls are you guys going to win? Who combined? Hmm. Josh, three, two, one. Eight. Oh, you short you I, said, I was going to say 11. Ooh. Oh. Love that. Kyle, how many yards is Josh going to throw for this year? I'm asking you, Kyle. And then, All right, I'm Josh, gonna go you first. think of your answer, too? It's got to be to the like the exact number, okay? Yeah. All right. All right. You ready? Kyle, three, two, one. How many yards is Josh going to throw for? Um, 5,241. Oh! Oh, oh wow. 5,000. What does it say? 280. 81. That was good. Whoa. Wow. It's 40 yards off. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to shortchange you. All right, need to take that okay. under. It's just all right. This one is a redemption game, okay? Mm-hmm. So everybody knows Josh is a movie quoter, videographic memory. Spent a lot of time sitting around watching movies all day. Um, so we're going to do a movie quote game round two. Some of the feedback, you know, like we did we did a season last year of The Room, and we like we meet about it as a team. We go, what do we want to change? Whatever. The f- most obvious thing was like, we're going to go a movie quote game with you. It cannot be cupcake answers. It can't questions. It can't be easy ones. So yeah. I really pressed Jake and Connor on the team here to come up with some good ones. Yeah. And then we're going to give you an opportunity with some bonus questions. If you get it right, we're going to have a follow-up question to the original question. Um, and I literally was like, I, I want I want Josh going like two for six here. All right, so I'm going to read it, and I'm just going to read it like chat GPT or whatever, some video. Oh, voice. no, 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 we're not doing that. We can't do that. We got to do it like we did last time. Well, I don't we got to get them a little bit. I'll, I'll get them. I'll get them on these, all right? All right, you do, you do these then. All right. First one, like the frightened baby chipmunk, you are scared by anything that is different. That is a couple's retreat. Oh, it's wrong. I didn't give you a great accent. Oh, for it's... one? Talladega That's why you got to read it. Jean Girard. Oh, fuck. All right, but hold on. I'm still going to throw it. Now that you know, the, because I know you know the movie, and I know you the. Okay, so you know the scene, right? Yeah, Ricky Bobby. Okay. So you're 0 for 1, but you can get a bonus point. What is the sponsor on Jean Girard's number 55 car? Um, It's the water bottle, the green water. It's the Perrier? Yeah, there we go. All right, one for two. All right, Whoa. next one. He died instantly the next day. He died instantly the next day. That's hot, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> Rod Kimball. Yeah. What did Rod do to get Denise's attention before that conversation? To get her attention? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a day scene, not a night scene. The day scene. Um, is this when he went down the hill and he tried to say... No, nope. try again. It, try again. The water? Is it what? The jump in the pool? The jump the community pool? Nope. Yeah. It's not. It's when he's in the garage and oh, he's got the he's mirror not- and he's on the <laughs> hammering the bike. Built a bunch of energy. Yeah, exactly. All right. You're right, one for three right now. Jake, Connor, come up with these questions. Great. This is exactly <laughs> what I wanted. All right. You should get this one, though. Um, it goes. I'll be in my room painting homo things. That is Wedding Crashers. Facts. What's the guy's name? Todd. Yep. What does Todd's painting depict? It's the big guy. Yep. (laughs) The big guy? Come on. This dude's a legend. Yeah, Vince Vaughn, but they call him the big guy. That's what Yeah, the big guy. It's the big guy. (laughs) Yeah. What's his name in the movie? I'll give you a bonus point for that. Oh my god! You can picture the redhead chick saying it. I can't think of it. All right, so then what? What's the picture of? It's a picture of Jeremy, but what's he, what is it? Can you picture the picture? Jeremy naked. Yes. Like on a bed of leaves or something? No. Yeah, I'll take. I'll accept that. It's a Garden of Eden, Eden, and he's holding a leaf over his crotch. <laughs> yeah. So good. That's what you need to get in your office. You should take your jerseys like, down. Like what? What is up. that painting worth? By the way. Jordan like the it. painting that Todd did in Wedding Crashers, that piece of extra, whatever. Like, what Millions. is that worth? Yeah. Millions. Millions. All right, All right you got two more. One. Not only did we embarrass Marky Mark, we let down the funky bunch. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> got him. You dude. should know this one. Can you give me the actors in it? A lot of good actors. I'll give you one actor that's in the movie. It's Will Arnett. Okay. It's, it's a different. sport I don't think you'd be good at. Based oh, off what you said earlier. Giving it away. Sport that you don't... Oh, it's Blades of Glory. Facts. Yeah, big help there. Yeah. Yeah. Strans van Waldenberg. Strans and Fairchild van Waldenberg. <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> Not a whore. <laughs> All right, bonus question. What animal rug does Will Arnett's character lay on top of and fondle while he says, some people are just sick? Polar bear. Yeah. <laughs> well, money. Boom. The first... First one, I should have known that one. I was thinking it was the the accent you gave me was kind of like a it's a tough accent. It was it was bad. That's why you can't go hard. accent. You just got to read it like it like Siri oh, would read it. Uh, the ask, I'm gonna give it a little bit. Be an ask for love. 
you know how he says it. Mm. That's, that's Say you like really thin pancakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love those things. The really thin pancakes? I'm not going to say it. You got the bread ball, fresh it up.